Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, in this episode, uh, I want to kind of go through some of the tools and my setup for web development. And the reason I'm going to do this is this really has nothing to do with a lot of the other tutorials. But inevitably, I do get a lot of questions via email. Um, people will, you know, see me do something in one of these videos and ask me what I'm using for it. And uh, you know, just so you'll know what I'm using, I think that's fairly important for you to know. Um, I, first of all, I do all of my um, the screencasts are all filmed on my. I have a little MacBook Air, a uh, little 11 inch, which I really like because it's portable, uh, it's fast, it's small. Um, and it's really a handy computer for web development. I usually can, it's very portable, so I have all my stuff with me all the time. Uh, and I, I just do my screen recording on here. And for screen recording, I use this app. It's called ScreenFlow. And a lot of people will ask me about that. I actually have a USB mic hooked up to the computer, and um, then I sweeten the audio later with some things. But that's essentially how I record the screencasts. Um, you just start it, and it records what you're doing. Um, it's also important, and I'm not trying to make this a Mac versus PC debate. I use both. Um, I just do all my screencasts on the Mac side. Um, and it's really important as a web developer that that you at least have access to whatever platform you don't have. So if you're a Windows user and you don't have a Mac, you need to be able to test things on a Mac. And uh, same if you're a Mac user and you need to be able to look at things on Windows. Um, just because you know you got to proof your sites for your viewing audience, and there are ways to do that. Uh, you know, hitting your friends up, even going to Kinkos and just paying by the minute or whatever. Uh, but anyway. Um, so that's kind of, I just to be clear, I use both, but I do most of my coding on the Mac. It's the one I use more, and I do all my screencasts on here. Um, as far as text editors, excuse me, code editors go, um, I've done a separate movie on the downfalls and pitfalls of Dreamweaver, which you've probably seen. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I am a fan of this, which is called TextMate. And uh, you can see it just looks like a text editor for the most part. There's not much interface to it. There's no buttons or anything. Uh, but what I like about TextMate is, first of all, it's a great code editor. And you can see I have an open document here, and I have some HTML in here. And code editors, as opposed to text editors, will color code your text. That's the most basic thing a code editor should do. And you can see that all my tags are in blue, um, all my attributes are in green, and my regular text is in black. Now, I can go in, and you can theme text mate, and you can change these colors if you don't want to. If you don't like reading everything on a white canvas, you can change it to white text on a black canvas. So it's got a lot of versatility to that. You can pretty much customize it however you want. You can put images in there even. Um, so that's good stuff. Um, and so, you know, TextMate also, uh, you might look into it, it's got this whole thing about bundles in here. And if I go into the bundles menu, here's all the bundles, and it has more you can install. Um, usually they're free, in fact, I've never seen one you pay for. Um, they're all basically, they're like plugins. And you can see that a lot of these represent languages or concepts, and there's more in here than you'd ever need. And uh, so it's really versatile to any type of programmer. If you go into the HTML, for instance, here's some code snippets. Uh, there's things you can do, utilities, like refresh running browsers if you have a browser or I can open a document in whatever browser is open or I can get documentation for a tag I can validate syntax on the w3c so there's lots of really cool handy things to have in the code editor right there um, then you know you have shortcut keys for most of these and you can you know customize those even um, however most of my, my just actual tag writing for HTML I use another application for this and you're gonna see me write things really fast and this is how I'm doing it I use an application called text expander and you can see at the top of the screen here in this menu I have this little T if I click on that, I can open Text Expander. Text Expander is an app. It runs behind the scenes, and what it does is it allows you to over on the left-hand side. You'll see I have a bunch of folders because I keep everything um, kind of organized. Uh, but it, it allows you to create snippets and shortcuts. So things you would need to let me delete everything in this document. I'll show you. So things you would need to write all the time. So if I need to know the current date, I can write D date D D A T E, and it pops in the current date. If I need the current time, I can write T time and it replaces it with time. So basically, I give it a shortcut and it replaces it with what I need to. Now these are pretty powerful because it's actually got to go get the current date. So it's not just cutting and pasting text it has stored somewhere. So that's kind of nice. Um, but uh, you know, it, you can use this for things like email signatures, you know, form letters if you need to write somebody back and it's the same kind of thing and you get a lot of requests or something. Anyway, uh, things like that. Um, but I looked at Text uh, Expander and I thought, you know, this would be aws absolutely awesome for, for coding HTML. And so I have, it took, takes a while to set up you just kind of do it as you go but I have a whole drawer full of HTML snippets here which allows me to start coding really really quickly and let me show you how this works it's closed text expander and I can go in here and I can say uh, semicolon HTML now why would I use semicolon HTML I always put the semicolon in front because if I just wrote HTML this works across any application you're using on your computer so if you're in a text or a, excuse me word processor and you're writing a word or you're writing an email and you use the word HTML it's going to replace it with this and you don't want that so I use a semicolon in front of everything I can do HTML5, so semicolon HTM5, which is easy to do. Uh, puts the cursor right in the title there, and I can say this is a document. 
Um, you can go down. There's there's even more. Let's let's do uh, let's do some tags here. Let's do an H1. So I do semicolon H1. This is a header. And drop another one. Let's do semicolon H2. This is a subhead. Spell it right. Uh, I can go down. What do you want to see? I'll do a link. Um, so if I do semicolon uh, href. Yeah, I, I programmed all these myself. There are, there are some kits that you can download for these. I would prefer to do them myself because I'll force myself to memorize them. Plus, I set it up. So I'll say this is a link. And you can ask, actually have it put that cursor wherever you want to, which is really handy. And so I'll go in here and say, you know, HTTP colon slash slash Google. Com. So it takes a little while to set up. Uh, sometimes you need text for something. Like, you know, the client's got you working on their website. They don't have their copy written yet. Um, I can do some Greek copy, some Laura Mipsum, which is just Greek text. If I go semicolon plip, uh, it is formatted in paragraph form, Greek text. So all of a sudden here, I have coded very quickly, I'll open it in a browser, an HTML page. Very cool. And I pretty much have these for all the tags that I use regularly. If I have a new tag, I'll go ahead and create a new snippet of text. So uh, Text Expander is highly, 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 highly recommended, and it works very well with any application, particularly TextMate. So those are the two big ones that I use for there. For graphics, um, I obviously use Photoshop. I think everybody has to at some point, even though um, it's got some of the same problems Dreamweaver does, and Adobe is very vexing at times, and it's expensive. Um, you know, uh, but Photoshop is great, but there are other times where I don't need something that heavy. Um, I just want to do something quickly, and I don't want to wait 10 minutes for Photoshop to open. And in that case, there's an app I'll use a lot called Pixelmator. Um, and Pixelmator uh, is like a Photoshop scaled down, and it opens really quickly. I can create a new image, so or you can open an image. So if you want to just change the levels in a photograph, or you know do something really quickly, you know make an image, crop an image, resize anything like that. I don't need all the 3D stuff Photoshop does, and so I'll use something that's a little lighter for that. So Pixelmator is a great program. I also don't have Photoshop on this computer, and the reason is is because I'm very limited on hard drive space, and so I have Photoshop installed on another computer. Licensing and stuff like that is just easier and cheaper. Just to keep it that way. And if I need to do Photoshop work, I will do all that in one shot on another computer. Um, so that's Pixelmator. Another one that I like is iPalette. Um, can't spell today. Uh, iPalette is really cool. iPalette's essentially a color picker. See, so you're, you're given this little window down here. And this is really great if I need to sample a color. Um, let's say I've got a client and I'm, you know, let's go to a website. Let's just go to Google. Let's say I'm working for Google and they're having me make some graphics and I need to get the Google blue. So I need to sample that blue. I can go in here and select one of these image wells, grab the magnifying glass, go over here and just sample that color. And uh, there it is. And it gives me the hexadecimal value. It gives me the RGB values and the closest web safe equivalent there. And so this is really nice. It's a very handy tool. Plus, this is actually hard to do in Photoshop. Photoshop, you can do uh, with the eyedropper. You can sample colors as long as you have something open in Photoshop. But if you're trying to get something off the desktop, oh boy, um, good luck. So uh, anyway, that's iPalette. And uh, those are some uh, graphics. Uh, programs that I use. There's another one called uh, I resize. So if I need to, if I'm making a web gallery, this will allow me to batch resize a whole bunch of images. So if some, uh, you know, I'm working with a photographer, they give me a bunch of digital images that are right off their camera. I can go resize them for the web all very quickly within here. I can change XF data, all that kind of thing. And most of these apps, you can just Google around. You can find them for free. Um, some of them cost a couple bucks, but usually not a big deal. Um, real quick to wrap this up, a couple utilities that I'm using. You see me do this a lot. This is an app called Quicksilver. Let me explain what Quicksilver does. Quicksilver is, um, it's actually an older app. It's no longer being supported. The developer works for Google now. He's working on some stuff for them. You can still get it. Uh, it's not the greatest thing in the world. It's just kind of like an old dog at this point, but I still use it and it's integrated into my workflow. And so, I mean, there's other things. It's free, but there are other things you can get. Uh, but it works really well with the Mac. And so, you know, there is no interface, but that little box and you invoke it. And so once you've installed Quicksilver, I invoke it by hitting command and then the space bar at the same time. And basically you think of it as just two windows here. There's a noun and a verb. So if I start typing a noun, I just start typing desktop. Oh, there's my desktop. I got two letters in. Uh, and then you tab over to the second window here. And I can uh, open the desktop. And if I hit the arrow out here, I can reveal it. I can open with an application. Anyway, there's all kinds of things you can do. So at a base level, it works really well as an application launcher. So if I need to launch Google Chrome, I can invoke uh, Quicksilver and start typing Chrome. And there it is. Hit return, and it opens it. I can do other things, too. Let's quit out of that. Um, I can get Chrome. If I want to find out where this is on my computer, I'll tab over to the other one and I'll say reveal and finder and it opens a window. There it is in my applications folder. Uh, if I want to grab Chrome, I say get info. 
I can get all the info about it. So anyway, uh, Quicksilver is something I use to keep me from having to click things 500 times to get into things. Um, real quick, a couple others. Uh, I use an app called Dropbox, and if you don't have Dropbox, you got to get it. Uh, they have free versions and paid versions. Uh, the free versions are more than enough. Uh, go to Dropbox.com, and you can sign up. But what it does is it installs some software on your computer. Okay, now the, again, no interface or anything, but it creates a folder, and so mine is this Dropbox folder right here, and here's all these folders within it, and I can put documents into those folders. Now, here's the cool thing is anywhere I install Dropbox, it uploads things into the cloud, and so I can go grab it from any computer. So a lot of times I'll keep my class notes, I'll keep things I'm working on, current projects, all in Dropbox. It uploads them in the background while I'm not messing around with it, and then when I go to another computer, all my stuff's there, and the free account gives you two gigabytes of space. You can do things like uh, web gallery for clients real easily. If I need to share files or share folders, it's a great way to send stuff because you can invite people to share uh, fi files and folders um, if you go to the Dropbox website and you've got an account. So Dropbox is a must. And then finally, the last thing I use for web development a lot is an application called Transmit. And uh, I can't get to open here because I'm talking and typing at the same time. And here's Transmit, the little truck. And Transmit is an awesome FTP application. It allows you, I keep track of a lot of websites and a lot of logins, and it allows me to save all those in here. Um, it has support for FTP, SFTP, uh, Amazon S3, um, web dev support. This is really nice if you're working um, in an enterprise situation where you have a web dev server, and I am several times, um, well, several times, uh, most of the week. Uh, so anyway, it's uh, a really awesome, awesome FTP application. And as you can see, this is pretty much what I use for all my web development, and I've completely negated using Dreamweaver. And uh, the point of this video wasn't to slam Dreamweaver and show you that. The point of this video was to show you what I use for, for that you see in all these videos. So anyway, I hope that's uh, fairly useful. Um, you know, find something that works for you. Try these as a starting point if you want. And, uh, you know, basically whatever makes you more efficient and quick and makes things easier to understand is what you should be using. So this is what works for me. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video.